Hey, Cleaning Nation, Mike Campion here with Suzanne Bandit, Grow My Cleaning Company. This amazing lady is um, one of our implementation coaches. She helps people. I'm kind of focused on the what to do and how to do it. She helps folks with the why to do it. And why isn't, why won't I do it? And what's holding me back and all that good stuff. And today um, we're going to talk about your self narrative or the less fancy way to say that would be the story or probably more specifically the stories that you tell yourself. Um, and how they affect your business, both good and bad, right? Because a lot of times I don't want people to be like, ah, oh, this isn't for me because, you know, I don't tell myself, I don't do that. It's like, oh, there's always a story. Whether it's a good story or a story that moves you towards your goal or away from your goal, there's always a story. That's all we do as humans. We are story creating machines. So we're going to talk about um, how to do that on purpose. And she's got uh, Suzanne. And she, usually there's a list of three. Today it's got five. So I'm going to shut up quick and get Suzanne started so we can get uh, all five of her golden nuggets before before our time goes up. So Suzanne, the floor is yours. Thanks, Mike. Yes, I thought this would be an enlightening and fun topic for today. So self-narratives are the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves. Mm. And the stories we constantly tell and reinforce actually become our life. We, it will mm -hmm. make up our life. Okay. So I have three common ones and two Suzanne ones. <laughs> and this, by the way, is not a Suzanne creation. The, the first three come from a lady, Vanessa Van Edwards, and she's a behavioral investigator. So she discovered this for herself. So shall we start? Number one? We shall. Excellent. Number one is the hero self-narrative. And in a hero self-narrative, you talk about challenges overcome. In the past or in the future or both? Everything. Okay. There was this challenge in the past. I overcame it. There's this challenge now, I will overcome it. Mm. Okay, so the challenge of um, something, something, uh, what's a cleaning related reference? Um, a challenge with not enough employees, I took care of that, right? My employees were fighting, I took care of that. So challenges overcome. The only thing I would like to point out, and I'm going to say, by the way, in all of these, there's no right or wrong, no good or bad. I'm just going to ask everyone to be reflective and say, hmm, is this the story that I say? Is this my self-narrative? Mm -hmm. Because a hero story can have many good connotations. However, the point that I would like to point out is sometimes we can look for the challenge, even create the challenge so we can say i overcame it mm. i i do see as business owners we can get addicted to that putting out fires energy which can feel good for a minute but it's not a you know long term it'll grind mm -hmm. so simply an awareness of let's make sure i'm not trying to find or create the challenges so that i can feel good putting them out and have a further story Janelle, I just did a podcast on that of the tendency for business owners to look at focus on potential future problems as opposed to actual opportunities available today. Okay. So self-narrative number two is the victim self-narrative. Hmm. And that's where everything happens to me. Hmm. So everything that happens You'll say, well, that's the government, or that was my employee's fault, or that was the store's fault, or that was whatever is going on. And the thing that I would like to point out about the victim mentality, and again, you just have to kind of say, what am I repeating to myself to hear your own stories? Mm -hmm. The victim mentality, it's taking away your control. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you're thinking things are being done to me, it feels like I have no control over that. But if you can say, you know what, what can I do? How can I stand in whatever's going on? It's now a choice and you take away the victim self-narrative. That is 
my least favorite story <laughs> is that victim because and again you'd mentioned the government i think there's a lot of meta stories the world tells us around you're tall you're short you're black you're white you're a woman you're a man you're old you're young and we can't really change a lot of those things right so so much of i think well really what i'm hearing suzanne is it's really what we focus on and how we choose to frame it right so certainly there are truths suzanne's a lady i'm a guy that gives me inherent benefits and difficulties that she doesn't have to or get to deal with or, or get benefit of. And she's got some strengths and weaknesses that I'm not going to have. And she's just different. To what end do we go into putting ourselves in this victim mentality? Again, it's a salve for a wound, but then it just keeps, it's like drinking salt water when you're thirsty, right? It feels better today, but then, you know, it's a, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy and just feels so yucky that hero story. And again, not right or wrong, but it just, one feels better and gets you one place. Another feels a little right. different and gets you another place. Right. And there's a lot of, so go back to the hero narrative. There's a lot of people who are very successful that have a hero self-narrative, right? I solve challenges. Are you kidding? Give me an obstacle. I'll overcome it. I just ask you to be aware not to create them. <laughs> so you get to tell another story. So you've got the opposite, the victim mentality. The third one that was pointed out by Vanessa Van Edwards is the healer or the savior narrative. Mm. Now, I find we actually have a lot of clients that I work with this a lot. The healer, the savior wants to help everyone. Mm -hmm. Often the people pleaser can't say no. It can be a road to burnout. It can cause business and life to suffer because you try to take on and solve other people's problems to the detriment of you even doing what's necessary for your business. I'm, These are I'm, the people that get yes, confused go ahead. when the stewardess on the airplane says, you got to put the mask on your yourself before you put it on the children. That makes no sense to them, or they, they, it makes sense to them in that very specific scenario, but then they get into family life or business life and don't understand that they're, right. you know, if they break down, all the people that they support also lose. Right. And, and the question here is, and again, I'm just asking everyone to kind of say, hmm, what are my stories wrapped around? How does it serve my business and my life? And how could it possibly be detrimental? to my business and my life. And here in the healer or the savior narrative, have there are sometimes business owners that keep an employee much longer than they should. Or even a client. Right. They don't fit. They're causing problems, but they feel somehow with the savior healer narrative, you feel almost responsible. Like I need to take care of everybody right? They need me. I'm going to hire them even though they may not be perfect because they really need a job. So this is the first time I've heard this framework and I'm really enjoying it, Suzanne. Thank you for sharing. It begs a question for me, at least, that each of these seems like could be used in an effective way or helpful way or an ineffective way. So there's the story, which is important to recognize, and there's what we make that story mean which I think is where the real power is. So let's use the victim because to me that seems the most all downside and no upside, right? I know some very successful people that have that. I don't know that it's um, tall, I'm short, I'm black, I'm white, I'm a female or male. I think it's the that guy in third grade told me I was a dummy or that teacher and I'd never make it anywhere. Um, and I was born poor and I am dyslexic or I did have trouble in school or whatever that case is. And the meaning we give that goes everywhere. So I'm a dummy and I guess I'll just be a dummy and never amount to anything. That's the meaning we could choose. I know. And again, I'm not, that's not an energy I feed off of. So I'm not personally experienced, but I see some very, very successful people that thrive in that. Oh, you say I can't do this. It's on. So how important is the story versus the meaning we give it? Right. And I would I would actually venture to say that if you say, well, you told me I couldn't watch me or you tell me I'm 
I'm in a country or a racial group or a man or woman that I couldn't watch me, I would say that actually falls in the hero narrative because it becomes a challenge and watch me overcome it. Okay. So that really is switching stories than it is mm-hmm. just switching the meaning. So I guess we, I guess really the question I had, the answer I'm hearing is, yeah, you can, once you identify it and it's tough because fish have a hard time understanding they're wet. And sometimes we are so ingrained in these stories. That's why I love you identifying. So it's a little easier to see it and go, oh, I guess I do think that I do feel that or I have gotten into that. So we can change it into a story that's a little more effective. It's not just the meaning. We can just often change the meaning changes the whole story, which is the point of this. Absolutely. And the, the, we can change anything with an awareness and then a choice. If we're not aware of the stories we tell ourselves, they run invisibly and control our lives for better or worse. When we become aware, then we can say, I like this, let's keep it, or I choose to change. Hmm. We need the awareness in order to make the choice. And then we can have any version we decide we want. So just as a bonus, and I'm dying to hear Suzanne's kind of bonus to uh, <laughs> stories, I think questions can really dictate focus and, and awareness. So in statements, we don't really learn much questions we learn, even if it's a question we're asking ourselves. So for me, I sometimes I might give myself, a, oh, I don't do that story. Like I put myself in categories. I do this, I don't do that, which is not completely true. A better response might be a question. When do I give the victim mentality. Like, I know I, I feel like I don't do it a lot, but when I do, I'll bet you it's really bad. Tell me, tell me about that brain. So I think if we ask the, if we just kind of go into this, not saying, you know, with no judgment, just going, tell me more brain, like asking the questions, when do I go each of these stories? I'm, I'm confident we can find it. And what does that mean? And why do I do that? And how is that serving me? I think those questions would all match these story frameworks pretty well. Right. And potentially in any situation. Good point, Mike, because we can say that. What narrative am I using with this this, uh, challenge or this something that's happened, right? There's a reality that's happening right before your eyes or in your life. And you could ask yourself, what self-narrative am I using? What do I choose to use? And right there, if it's good, keep it. If you decide, I'd rather respond in a different way, change the self-narrative and your story is going to change. Mike Camping here. Do you ever listen to the podcast and go, this is great information. I just wish I could actually get it implemented. I wish I could get some help. Will we do that? If you would like either myself or my team's help actually coming up with a plan that's specialized to you and your business, because with these podcasts, obviously we have to be very general and we can only go 20 minutes at a time. If you'd like to jump on a call with myself or my team, go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. We'll jump on a call. There's no charge. And we'll help you get some absolute clarity around exactly what to do next and how to do it. The reason we don't charge for these calls is the plan that we come up with. People want help implementing that. If that's the case, we're happy to talk about it. And if it's not, that's okay too. We're happy to just help you come up with a plan. So if you want to translate the information you're learning here into an actual plan that can change your life, give us a ring, growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. Love to either myself or have one of our coaches walk you through and actually personalize the content you get here to where you're at with your business. Talk soon. Um, you know, where well, this is kind of timely, I don't know when we're going to release this, but we are recording uh, in the United States the day after our presidential election, right? And sadly, I feel like this is one of the more where half the country's like, suck it, chumps. And the other half is really scared, overwhelmed, or unhappy. And, you know, it, it stinks that we can't just be like, well, not the president I voted for, but I'm all in, or it's the president I like, but, you know, I want to, you know, a little more. It's, it's right. as I've been younger, I didn't find it to be so, um, you know, you're on your side of the road, I'm on my side. So all that to say, regardless of, you know, which half of the country you're in, and it's so sad that we are in halves, right? You could go, well, the victim mentality could be, oh no, the guy I got, you know, didn't win or whatever, or um, gal I wanted or whatever the case may be. And we can change that to a, a, a hero. Okay, well, what do I need to do to create the, you know, I can't, yes. I can't control who the heck is in <laughs> living in the White House today or tomorrow or God forbid the day before, but what can I do? And even on the savior, like how can I 
you know, we don't live, we all of the United States, but we live in cities and towns with different governors and city managers and HOAs. And, you know, most of us have families, even as our role in that, like, what can I do for the people I love? That, that's going to make a much bigger difference than if it's a knucklehead or a genius in the White House. Like, what can I do? So there's, I think it's a perfect example of, you know, lots of folks out there right now might feel victimized and that's, that sucks. Don't have to, right? We can't change the outcome of the election, but we can cer certainly change our response to the story that we tell ourselves or the self story that we tell ourselves about it. That's beautiful. Thank you, Mike, for that perspective. Yeah, I just, I, I don't like getting into politics because that's not what we do here, but um, I don't like when the country, you know, feels, again, that victim, you know, it's like, well, maybe your guy or gal won or didn't win, but how you respond to that is 100% your, your, you know, your prerogative. All right. I've, I was told there'd be a bonus too. Do tell. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here's Suzanne's special too. And with these two, you're going to see the world I choose to live in. Okay. Then... Th the narrative number four is the successful person. All right. The successful person self narrative is I win at things. Mm, I that. am a successful business owner and even everything I touch turns to gold. We are looking for the wins. Now let's be clear here. Does this mean this always happens? No. Does it mean that Every single, you know, in all of the others, the hero self narrative, are there potentially a few obstacles you don't overcome? Yes. But your story of I overcome them supersedes everything else. It overruns and overrules it. So if you develop the successful person self narrative, you're going to automatically look for your wins. And the crazy thing is, I would imagine it's single digits percentage wise of things that are unarguably successful or unarguably unsuccessful, right? Like 80, 90% is probably really depends on how you look at it, right? Like every successful business story I've seen, including my own and those of clients or friends or, you know, um, biographies or autobiographies comes with a lot of stuff that at the moment probably felt not so successful, <laughs> But in retrospect, it's like, wow, that's when we turned the corner. That was that was what needed to happen at that time. So this other thing could happen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in retrospect, it's a little easier to kind of see it dispassionately. But in the in the moment, we can we have a lot more agency to tell ourselves a successful story on almost anything right. that happens. Right. So let's take an example. Uh, something. Let's say you've got a successful person self narrative. So you go forward and you do something. You create the business, you make the decision within the business, and it doesn't turn out. You have a choice with what just happened to fall into a victim yeah. self-narrative and say, well, this was all done to me. I have no control. I or knew it. I knew every time I try right. something new, I get smacked in the head. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Well, not beautiful, but that's a good example. Accurate. accurate. <laughs> not beautiful, but accurate. Okay. Or you can say, if you've got a, if you're working on the successful person self narrative, you can say, what I tried didn't work. However, I'm obviously, I, I will succeed. I know I succeed. This is my story. I succeed. So I'm going to try this in a different way. Let me, oh gosh, let me frame this in a way. I, I've got a really good example that we go through with our clients that will make sense to you guys that you can extrapolate to other areas of your life. So one of the big things we talk about, we'll go real tactical just for a second on when it comes to client attraction or marketing is tracking. It's really, really important. But very, very few of our, none of our clients come in with knowing what to track or how to track or track or know what to do with the data when they come in. And the reality is on, there's some things that you can make some money right away. And we love those, but some of the other stuff, like people are like, I want to build a Facebook funnel and have, you know, automated thing and blah, 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 blah. Oftentimes with the ad spend of the people that we have, which is low, we want to make sure we're not wasting money on untried stuff. Um, they don't, they have a negative or zero return on ad spend month one. And the perspective could be, I knew it. I spent 500 bucks on Facebook or whatever the case would be. And I'm, I didn't get a single new customer. 
the way we frame it, which I I guess this is really the success, I would call it the truth, but it would also fit into the, the success story is we're buying data the first month. That's the whole point. Very rarely do we even test something. We just put out an ad, it works right away. We at first buy the data and that's an investment. And then we make some changes and then we get more data and God willing, it works that time. But sometimes we need a second round of data and God forbid a third round of data. But if the story, the success story is everything works generally pretty quick and I'll either, I'll either get more data, which is sometimes more valuable than an actual sale or two, or I'll get a sailor in the best case scenario, I'll get both. But when I don't get any, I'm like, great, that was the, that was the success story. Yeah, of course I'm getting data. Why would I have this thing work right off the bat? It's going to be, you know, ideally this is a skill set that will be able to make me millions of dollars from here on out. Does it make sense to invest a couple months and some, a couple bucks and getting data? Yeah. So I think the, the victim mentality is Facebook screwed me. They're always trying to, you know, stick it to me. And the successful person is like, yeah, that's just part of the process. And if, and when I ever give up, then it'll be over. But until then we're just in process. And the process I thought was going to feel like this turns out it feels like that. Okay. Moving on. Right. And you see both of those scenarios give us a different story. They give us a different outcome. So remembering that the stories that we constantly reinforce, those thoughts of who we are, will give us the life that we ultimately have. Mm -hmm. So the if successful- If I can be so bold, it'll give uh -huh. us the life we deserve. Better for worse. <laughs> Ooh, okay. He said it, not me. <laughs> okay. So- the successful person narrative just means if I'm not having success now, I will have because it's a given. Okay, but let's do number five. This yes, is please. kind of fun. This is kind of, oh, my husband would say, oh, that's so you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it's something I've lived with for a very long time, and it's I always get what I want. Hmm. Okay. Um, I invite everyone to play with this one because it's been extremely successful for me, okay? I always get what I want, meaning, well, let's put it this way. We were in a store recently, and we were actually from the last event um, before this one in June, and we were going down the Oregon coast, and somebody was making homemade plaques, mm. and I'm very sorry I didn't get this plaque, because it keeps coming back to me. Aww. And the plaque said, I don't expect you to hand me everything I want. You can just put it down anywhere. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and my husband looked at me and said, that is so you. And I'm going to say with that narrative, sometimes it doesn't happen right away. But I know that no matter what happens, in the end, it plays out that it turns around to be something that I wanted. Okay, so it's all about looking for it. And it's so funny because, and again, everyone out there can go, I tried that and it didn't work. It's like, yeah, this isn't, the world isn't a magic genie. But, and I don't want to say we're magic genies, but man, there's a lot that goes on. Just again, if I walk, Suzanne and I, go to dinner um, together with our spouses and on the car ride over, I'm telling my bride, Natalie, these things always stink and it's always awkward. And I, you know, I bet you the food's going to be terrible. And, you know, I, you know, Suzanne, you know, I don't even know why we're going out with these people. That energy, if unchecked, if I just say, I'm not meeting Suzanne, I'm just meeting anybody, the likelihood, some of that kind of comes to, to, to fruition it's pretty high, right? Like when you're looking for stuff, you can find it. You know, I forget that the, some Russian terrible person, you know, would say to you, know, you, you show me the guy, I'll, I'll tell you the, the crime, right? If you look hard enough, you can find the guilt in anybody, whether it's a dinner, a dinner partner, whatever the case may be. But Suzanne, and it's tough because she's got such a powerful will. I'm sure she would beat me if, if I came with that energy and she on her ride over to dinner with Sean would be her husband would be saying, they're going to be great. I love these guys. I bet you we have so much fun. I bet you we close the place down. I bet you the food is just delightful. And when she comes up with that energy, the likelihood that that 
transpires higher. So yeah, we could make the argument. Yeah, Suzanne, but I'll bet you came with that energy sometime, had a terrible dinner. And she goes, yeah, obviously. So I'm stuck with only 87% of my life working out great. It's <laughs> supposed to negative Nelly over here. And sometimes I go out thinking it's going to be terrible and I'm delightfully surprised. But again, she's probably happy with her 80 to 90% success rate or things happening. And I'm probably unhappy and victimized by my 10 to 18% success rate. And I say success of getting the the picture that I, I, I picked. So I love the, if we're going to tell ourselves a story, why not just a story? I'll bet you it's going to be great. I'll bet you these people are going to be amazing. I'll bet you this client's going to be great. And we do the opposite when we talk about like, what if I, you know, do a group interview and a hundred people show up or nobody shows up as opposed to what if the exact right amount of people came and I had so much fun and we had two or three people that not only did I hire, we became friends for years. Like just bring one of those two stories into the a group interview with you or any, and just watch what happens. Like same thing, same people are going to show up, but just what I bring to it can change everything. So there you go. Rant over anything to wrap with Suzanne. Awesome. So again, it's awareness, and if you want, you can make a different choice. Let's have a look at our self-narratives. And it's not about working harder. It's about thinking differently. Well, well summarized, Suzanne. All right, guys, gals, um, I feel like we've, yeah, I love that. Love, love, love this conversation. Um, for those of you that are a little frustrated, go, man, I like these one to many calls, but I, I really would like some, how does that work in my life? And the specifics, feel free to reach out, Instagram, growingcleaningcompany.com, whatever. We got a ton of people. We are here to help owners of cleaning companies specifically. So if you need a little more one-to-one, -one, let us know. And if you're enjoying the uh, podcast, let us know. And if you're not enjoying it, let us know. Be, be nice. I uh, hope that's helpful. Talk soon, guys. See ya. Hey, Cleaning Nation, if you dug the content you just got, we don't do any ads and I don't sell anything on this podcast, but if you would just subscribe, rate, and review, it would be huge and I'd be so appreciative. Not only is it gonna help me, but you'll help other owners of cleaning companies across the world work less, make more, and get profitable. So if you appreciate the value we give, again, subscribe, rate, and review. It would mean the world to me. I'd really appreciate it. And we sure appreciate your time and attention.